Hi, I'm Ruth Kenner from I Quilt and More. Today we're going to talk a lot about the machine and what I've learned so far. I've had the sewing machine almost two months and the amount of change that it's brought in is much greater than I thought. So far I've only been sewing. So I've set up the machine so we can actually have a good look at it. So I've turned off a lot of the lights. I uh, usually don't work that way. I've kind of dulled things. And that's the, uh, the other change. I have control over how much light I have on every little element. It's almost like it's a computer that sews and not a computerized sewing machine. Uh, I enjoy it and uh, I wish it wasn't taking me so long to learn all these things, but it's been a lot of fun and I'm very grateful that I've had a, this sewing machine. So let's get started and we'll take a good look at what it is. One of the things that I uh, meant to write down in my planner, but I haven't, but I'm going to start and I'll write it down today, is a, the amazing uh, way that I could find out everything I want to on my sewing machine. So let's get in. I have to remember each time. And I go right there. And it's like a car, <laughs> okay? Number of cut cycles since cleaning. I don't use the cut cutting element that often. Uh, total number of stitches, yeah, since I got it. And total number of stitches since last maintenance. So that's really, that's a different figure. I don't know why it's so different. And this is where you find the serial number. I just happen to think that's really interesting. I can keep track of how much stitching there is. Though I, I have to say that sometimes I could be getting a lot done in sewing without actually sewing. There's cutting and there's ironing and pressing and all those things. But I was very excited about finding out about that stuff. So let me get out of it. And the other big thing that I learned using this machine is a the difference between if I go back right here, this is uh, basic stitching. And one would think if I press one, uh, it's the same, you know, and I just, I can make this bigger or smaller, a, you know, and it goes yellow. So I can basically set it up to three, but yet it's different. And the reason it's so different um, is I'm going to press that right back. By the way, this works uh, as a stylus for this touch screen. Who knew? So the reason it is really much different is I want you to take a look right there. That's the tension. That's 525. And that's just one of the reasons that it does. Uh, it's for that. If I take you right back to quilting stitches, and that's why there isn't a um, creative consultant for stitching, uh, for quilting, because I've got it right here. If I press on 1325, which is also at three, right now I have it changed over to five, and I'm going to explain why that is. Uh, but you look right there, the tension's 4.0. And that's a really big deal. In other words, everything here is made for stitching. Not only that, you can press right here on the question mark, like so, and this uh, icon question mark comes up. And let's say I want to find out about 1326. Why is it so different? And here it is, shorter straight stitch, stitch used for piecing and patchwork. But if I get out of that and I press question again, I ask this, this is recommendations, longer straight stitch that we saw. Machine quilting, altered dual feed system if necessary when sewing difficult fabric. So right there, it is made for setting up for sewing several layers and for decorative. I can make it longer or shorter, but that's the secret here. This is the same thing. And here later on, um, when I get my magnifying glasses, the bracket installed, I'm waiting for that. It's taking a while. A lot longer. These are the decorative stitches, and I could find out what they're used for. And it's quilting, crazy patchwork, and decorative work. But what's really important is, is let's say I want to get to the decorative stitch, and I, you know, I do a lot of different things when I add on. Let's say I want to uh, use 301. It's 275. But if I go back and I use a similar stitch, right like that, let's say, it's 325. So when I'm experimenting with other stitches, because let's say I'm going to do with that stitch what, what it, and use it as a quilting stitch, I could play around with this very easily. See, I can move it up and down, and that gives me help 
when I'm hacking it. So I can apply things different places. Of course, I basically leave things as they are if I'm using it for what it's purposed for. But it's more than just in that place. It also can work as a little consultant. And I go along and I ask what all these stitches are for. And one of the things that I really loved about this machine uh, is all the stitches that I have in the quilting area already set up for me because I will be using them. Uh, this is one of my the ones that I'll be using quite a bit. My other machine had quite a few stitches, but you really I really didn't know what made them a quilting stitch and what didn't. And by this being known, I can actually hack it. So, and those are the things that have really made a difference. So I'm going to show you how what I'm doing right now. Uh, as far as quilting goes, I'm finishing a quilt. Before I get started, though, I'm going to press right here on the foot. And the foot, this is, uh, I was very excited to get the 770 because I have no intention of doing embroidery and um, creating my own decorative stitches. And the reason is, is I have so much to do. I, I do art quilts and I sew my own clothes and I do samplers and I you know, and I make baby clothes and I make baby quilts and, you know, I, I have enough to do. So I decided to cut on that and who needs extra features? But the only thing that I'm unhappy with, and it's not a game changer, is I have here, it'll, if I press on that, it'll give me information about that foot. It's one of the recommended foot for whatever I'm, feet that whatever I'm on, but it doesn't recognize the foot that I have. And that's the only thing that I'm not that crazy about. But going through, I'm going to go back to one, three, uh, two, five. And now, uh, I am, if you could see, this is on 45. The normal is 50. And the reason why I did that on that is because I'm which foot I decided to use. So if you can get the camera straight in here, you can see. Now I turned the lights off of this uh, sewing machine so I could take uh, pictures without any glare. And that's a really big advantage that I'm able to do it. You see that little uh, thing right there? That's the walking foot. But the problem is with the, uh, with the one foot, it's a tiny bit higher. So I decided, even though it calls for 1D, I decided to upper, to higher this just a bit so it's 45 and it worked fine. The other thing that I did is, is even though, uh, because I'm um, doing extra layers on what I'm doing, I did a sample of this. So this is basically the quilt sandwich. It's not very pretty and scraps folded over. And I did check the, the, um, uh, the, the, um, the, the gauge right there. So I made sure that the threads are going, working really well. And I forgot what that word is right there <laughs> for some reason, the tension. Okay. So I did uh, do a little bit of experiment and, uh, I really like doing that, but going through and, and saying what I did, this is, uh, one of the hacks that I did and I've been doing on my other machine is when I'm applying binding, I wrap, roll it around the uh, free hand system, uh, that I have here because I really like that. Uh, when I was uh, doing it, and I'm gonna show you this quilt. This is going to be a quilt uh, that's going to go on um, a table that we have, and it's gonna be like this diamond uh, size. Uh, and uh, it's a sidekick, it's one of my sidekicks. When I quilt a lot, I make a, an extra simpler quilt to go with it. I try to make it simpler. And I have little tiny things that I, I practice on, and then I have something bigger I practice on, then I do the regular piece. Quite often I end up throwing it away. This one, I'm, I actually am able to use it. And I couldn't decide which of these three colors to use for the binding. So I turned two of the colors into ribbon. And so now I basically, it's gonna look like this and I'm using all three colors. That solved that problem. Now this is already at two inches because I used it on a different quilt and I made a lot of it because, uh, because I thought that it makes really great binding and I knew I would use it again, but it means that I can't choose how big it is because it's already cut out. And I applied these ribbons and I wanted it to be in a way that nobody can see it. So I use this one because I can't use my basic foot that I always use because I want this to go right in here. Okay, so I want it to be at the edge and I want everything you see here to be lined up 
right with that edge, but I don't want it to be on the quarter inch or three eighths. I want it to be all the way over to five so that when I sew it, yeah, it just goes right through. You could see I'm closing right to the edge on all pieces and the stitch here, this is grabbing the whole piece and the stitch here is right on the side really far over and I really like that and um, I really like that with my uh, with my machine that I can do it let me just clip it the uh, main thing that I like about all these D foot feet is the way that I don't have to put on a great big walking foot but not, none of these ribbons curl and uh, and that's one of the basic things that I like now I'm going to show you a different um, something different that I'm doing, uh, sew along that I joined. And the reason why I'm showing you this is that I use this foot for it, okay? And you can come on in and it works the same way as the other foot, but you can see usually when I sew with this, I have the, um, the, one, the narrow hole uh, attachment, uh, stitch, stitch plate right there. You could see the difference. That's the stitch plate for uh, patchwork and quilting. And uh, what is so amazing about this, because that little foot that I showed you before pulls the thread things along, is all these corners, everything, don't have to be taken out and repositioned and re-sewn like I used to. It would be a lot more work. This just like that. I lined it up and everything went in. And quite often when I was done doing it, you would see that this was all wavy and I would have to block it and get it to lace flat. And this is no blocking, just pressed. And there you go. Okay. So having this, even piecing this machine, I, I haven't even touched on the great things it does. And yet here I am. So I've gone so much farther with what, what I do. So the other thing uh, that I'll show you is, is I finish the edge with the overlock stitch so it stays up and straight, okay? And when I sew, uh, because I'm not at that stage yet, I'm not gonna show you. When I show, sew this on, I had a problem where this is uh, two inches, folded in half is an inch. So if I do a quarter inch, that would leave three quarters of an inch and uh, that would mean it would be a little fluffy. Yeah, because it would be a quarter, a quarter, that's a half inch, it would leave a whole quarter inch to pick up the bulk. If I did three eighths, that would mean that I would have five eighths and have three eighths and three eighths and it would be too tight and it wouldn't work. It would be too bulky. So I needed to sew, I'm gonna need to sew right here when I put it on right here so a little bit is coming out you can see right there instead of going right up to this so if I put it in now and I could uh, uh, let me get rid of this okay and if I because the machine is not won't take it if I yeah okay and I uh, take off this and it's a lot less work uh, than it was at the beginning for some reason I had a hard time switching things around I'm not going to do the plate because I'm not actually sewing or if I do I'll just do a really big stitch so I could uh, get rid of it of course it doesn't work as usual uh, because I'm here but if I do on the edge of this yeah you can see I believe let me do like this so I get well okay I'll just sew like this even though uh, it doesn't matter okay so if you go right here usually I'm sewing like this right there at the edge see how it's flush to here so I'm gonna move that over just a bit it's not a full eighth and I'm going to have a little bit of that exposed and I'm gonna sew and that's what I'm going to do for applying the binding. And such precision work I didn't have on my other foot uh, that I used for quilting. I still have it. It was a great foot, and I'm very grateful that I had it for so many years. But nothing is like this. 
the amount of precision and the work that I'm getting done, I'm so thrilled about it. So just to uh, finish, I always like to remind uh, of myself mostly how grateful I am that I have this and how grateful I am that my biggest problem is narrowing down all the things, making it so I decide not to do things because I love uh, to do so many things. I get overwhelmed and I live in a time period where I have so much to do, so much going on. How, how wonderful is that? Uh, and uh, we just have to remember to be grateful. So uh, next time, I'm hoping uh, to talk to you about the creative consultant, the gift that I got from Bernina uh, that I didn't even know I wanted it and how I use it and how it's going to be a great asset for me. And next week I have a wonderful conference that I'm going to be at. So in another two weeks, we're going to learn together about the creative consultant. And after I've used it, I'm going to explain why I'm so impressed with it. So. Goodbye, signing off.